And then I did have another call where it's mother and son, and then the, I ended up talking to the other son. So the one son died and the mom had sold her condo. They moved into a new construction home and they lived in there three months. He died. They asked me, is there a way we can pause the payment? And I said, you need to call your mortgage lender, tell them you've had a life tragedy, that sort of thing. See if they'll work it out with you. But it sounds like she won't be able to fund the place. So they might have to sell it. I'm trying to be a little patient. And what I told him, I said, see if the mortgage company will give you a couple months because your mom's grieving. Losing a son is a very difficult thing don't know the cause of death. So it's like, let's give her some breathing room. Let's try not to force her into a decision. Um, let me stay in touch with you, but you've got to call the mortgage company and talk to them. I can't really do anything to you there because they're the ones that hold the loan. And I haven't done this stuff, so I right. think it just because I'm like, oh, I don't know if there's anything else I can do to help these guys. I think there was a time when you could call banks and mortgage companies and they would actually delay my experience for the last three, four years has been they're going to move according to maximizing and protecting their rights, no matter what you do or say. I've literally had you know, called and had my phone as nice as can be. We got a letter from them saying, you have 30 days. Is there some extreme circumstances or problems? And then the 31st day, they'd filed a foreclosure. It's just one of those things where the business, I think, is such that they're not going to delay. And you have to plan for them marching towards foreclosure as quick as you can. What does that mean? You have to worry about the credit for the decedent. It doesn't really matter. But if you're paying late fees and penalties, if they have cash, they want to avoid that. If they don't have cash, there's not much they can do. They can't advance against their probate inheritance. There's ways to do that. And we've had vendors on this call. And I also help with that as well. I have a company that does that, where we'll advance the money to make the payments if they want. But the only reason to make mortgage payments would be to avoid foreclosure or delay foreclosure it would not make sense just to protect the interest, the credit of the seed, because it's just not going to make a difference down the road. So I would say not to, not to put much stock into whatever they say to the mortgage company. And I also feel like you want to take control. When I sign something to the customer, I'm creating them more work. I want to be the solution. And I'd say to them, you can call the mortgage company. My experience is going to go in one ear out the other. They'll be nice to have the phone, but they're going to continue to foreclose. And we have to prepare for that. And here's our timeline. And, and they can't foreclose before this time. And we need to get it sold before that. And as long as you get that done, then you're okay. Okay. That makes sense. Cap so, in the chat box, prior episode, we went through probate cash, one of the vendors that you can use that can help you with that as well. Steven, so what I gathered from that is you've got the son as a decedent, the mother is the, the executrix or administrator of his, his estate. I know the other son is. Okay, so yeah. the brother is the administrator. Yeah, and the brother's the PR and the mother's just in the house. The mom's living there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And brother has been making mortgage payments but can't any longer? Well, he doesn't want to. The deceased was making the payments. They sold mom's condo to put down a huge down payment on this new construction house. And that's like $700,000. And she sold her condo for like 300. Okay. Yeah. And she, so that's her primary residence now. And she needs it to stay that way. Exactly. But she can't afford to make the mortgage payments. Bingo. And he didn't have life insurance, the decedent. That doesn't sound like he did. No, it was unexpected. I'm not quite sure how he passed, but he just is, is there equity in the home? I probably some, but. The market has shifted so much. I mean, we've seen new construction houses lose a hundred grand in value in the past three months out here. So how many, bed how many bedrooms? It was four bedroom, two and a half bath. I would tell her to find a place to live that's smaller. If it's just her by herself and rent it, if you can't sell it, rent it. Okay. That's what I would do. It's so, I don't know if you've heard, we actually have an example of it on the YouTube channel. The way I interview people in a pre foreclosure situation. I know 9.9 9 .9 times out of 10, I know that they're not going to be able to stay in the home, but nobody wants to be told that, right? You start the interview with, listen, let's, I'm going to ask you a series of progressively more personal questions. If anytime you're uncomfortable, please let me know and explain to me why you're uncomfortable. But in order for me to really look at all the options available to help you, I'm going to have to have some of the, I have to have you answer some of these questions. So we'll start to interview her and say, do you currently have an income that can support this mortgage payment? No. Do you expect a windfall of cash? Do you expect passive income from somewhere? Is there money in the estate you're expecting to inherit? I'm just walking her through an interview. I know the answer. I know she can't afford the house and I know she needs to move, but she doesn't yet. 
So in a matter of 30 to 40 minutes, I can walk somebody to a conclusion that would take 90 days and end with a sheriff. And I can save her that embarrassment and give her a more suitable living situation with dignity and tact. And I can help her in one conversation come to that realization. So that's what I would recommend is sit down with her, walk her through the options until you hit a dead end on every one of them. And then the options basically become, we try to sell the home at market value, which is unlikely because the market's fallen a hundred grand and the rates have risen. So your options really are, you rent the house or you sell it to me subject to, well, it's in, it's going to be tied up in probate. So that probably doesn't make sense either. You rent the house or you have, was this one, was there a will or is it intestate? It's he, it's in probate, but he did, I think it's like it's formal probate is what they call it here. Like he filed himself and doesn't have an attorney. But was there a will? I didn't ask him, so I don't know. Okay. We'll assume there wasn't, which state law will say the brother gets some, the mom gets some, right? So they're 50-50 heirs to the estate. If the estate could quit claim the asset to brother and mom, and then brother and mom actually sell it to you, well, you can't because you got the note. You'd have to come in with cash. Like I, this one, I would tell them to rent it. Yeah. Or tell her to save every dime she can and get ready because in three to six months, she's likely to have a knock at the door. Yeah. This is going to become more and more common guys. Recency bias has blinded us to what it was like in 2012, 13, 14. We're going to uncover more and more of these situations where you have nice homes with debt on them and people bought the payment, not the price. And the price has changed 30, 40%. The payment for that same house is twice as high. So. This is where creative financing can backstop your markets, but in probate, it becomes challenging because you have to find a way to transfer title. So the estate could transfer title subject to the existing lien staying in place. Then you could do a second sub two deal, but getting the heirs to understand that is probably, it's going to be difficult, but you could do a two, like a two title transfer sub two here. If you can get everybody on the same page, it's going to require you to really be able to dumb it down in layman's terms. Because you have to get title to transfer out to them as heirs with the lien in place because you can't pay it off. Then you have to pay a second set of transfer taxes and get it to transfer from them to you. And then you're eventually holding the asset and the note still the decedent's name. And then you have to find a way to refinance it. And if you, and on that one, if your equity is super thin like that, if you've got a hundred thousand dollars spread on, on equity. You're better off to have them quit claiming out to themselves and turn it into an investment property or quit claiming out to the mother and have her get roommates or just let it go. Okay. What's her age? The mother, he says she was in her mid sixties and I'm guessing he's around my age, like early thirties, mid thirties. Yeah. One thing to consider are there's things like pad split. There's residential assisted living, RAL home. They could convert it to a business. It could be, hell, you could, it could be as simple as Airbnb. She could just Airbnb rooms to make the mortgage payments. But eventually the probate has to close and the bank needs paid off. So how are they going to do that? Yeah. And while the probate is open, you can control the situation by getting the debt service covered. But eventually they're going to have to come to a conclusion that if they can't sell the home for the note payoff, then it's probably going to have to be let go. Okay. And probate can stay. There's no mandate on how long probate or how long it can be. You can drag it on for two years if you want and be using the rent to make the mortgage payments over that two year period. Maybe the equity catches up. Maybe they can get refinanced, but if she's 65 and doesn't have any cash, it's unlikely she's going to be in a position to refinance it ever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's her age? The mother, he says she was in her mid sixties and I'm guessing he's around my age, like early thirties, mid thirties. Yeah. One thing to consider are there's things like pad split. There's residential assisted living, RAL home. They could convert it to a business. It could be, hell, you could, it could be as simple as Airbnb. She could just Airbnb rooms to make the mortgage payments. But eventually the probate has to close and the bank needs paid off. So how are they going to do that? Yeah. And while the probate is open, you can control the situation by getting the debt service covered. But eventually they're going to have to come to a conclusion that if they can't sell the home for the note payoff, then it's probably going to have to be let go. Okay. And probate can stay. There's no mandate on how long probate or how long it can be. 
you can drag it on for two years if you want and be using the rent to make the mortgage payments over that two-year period. Maybe the equity catches up. Maybe they can get refinanced. But if she's 65 and doesn't have any cash, it's unlikely she's going to be in a position to refinance it ever. Yeah. Steven, I have one other thing. Like, do you know if there's an HOA? I don't believe there's an HOA, but I could double check it on the MLS. Check your zoning and check your HOA regs if there are any. There might be the potential that you can bring in an existing RAL provider. You're near Salt Lake, you said, or in Salt Lake? Uh, around the area. I'm north of it, but I work in the county yeah. here. So someone to add to your network, find a residential assisted living investor, sit down with them, say, look, can I buy you a cup of coffee? I thought I might have a deal for you. Sit down with them. The potential here is that the family could potentially base, essentially they could accept it as inheritance. Just trying to think like you could do that two layer sub too, and it might make sense for him because he's going to get three or four times market, well, three or 10 times market rent. One of the things you could potentially do is he could JV with the heirs. So they could quit claim the home sub two into a land trust and he's 50% beneficiary there. The mom and son are 50% beneficiary. Now they're essentially going to become business partners and they need to get the hell out of his way. She's going to move either way, but this could be a way that you could preserve and grow generational wealth without them having to let go of the house. And he could get a free house for his RAL model, brand new free house. I was just trying to think outside of the box. You might find somebody who has a residential assisted living portfolio and at least sit down with them because it sounds like that might be a really good, a good use for the home. You're in a major metro market where there's a shortage of assisted living. Yes, um, yes. So that's why I'm going that route. That's why I think it might be the highest and best use. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. I do have a meeting with a company called, it's a Sal property management. They own 12 big assisted livings. And then we have a meeting with basically their board about being the real estate agent that they recommend to their sales reps, just because they need people to sell their house to move into their communities. I mean, that's a very big thing. So that's something I, okay. Yeah. I can talk to James about that. That's a great idea. Yeah. That way you don't only have to move the deed once the debt could stay in place. It rolls into the land trust. It looks like an estate plan. Now the bank is going to get the bank is going to get notice from social security that a death occurred and they could call that note at any time. That's something you need to be aware of anytime you do sub two on probate. However, if we are putting residential assisted living, if that's the model we apply to the house, the reason I chose that is I'm damn confident we can have a debt service coverage ratio of higher than 1.3, even if rates go to 12%, because we can take a four bedroom house and rent it for 4,000 a month where the market rent would have been 2000 a month. I know I've got the DSCR I need for a cash out refi contingency. Okay. Steven, thank you so much. It was great having you on.